Good morning, folks. It is a morning time, believe it or not. I'm doing this video today, Wednesday, the 28th of September. I got an email from somebody today asking me, I'm not going to give her name. Uh, I asked her if I could use her name, but I didn't get an answer yet, so I thought I'd go ahead and just do it without revealing the name. But it's it's an interesting topic that I think is worthy of discussion and for everybody that wants to move to Ecuador, especially those of you that are single, like myself, okay? Uh, Don, your videos have become part of my favorite lineup. I really appreciate your down-to-earth talk about both what you like and dislike about your life in Ecuador. I'm thinking about living there myself and I am especially interested in the downside of things because no place is ideal it seems we have options sometimes concerning what difficulties we choose to live with and those we do not. And she asked me some specific questions, and I'm going to answer those for you as soon as I come back. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So here's your questions. My biggest concern about moving so far, well actually before I do that, I, I, I like this. She's interested in the downside of things. This is one thing you don't hear a lot about, folks. You don't hear a lot about the downside of living here in Ecuador, unless of course you're listening to me, because I talk about what's good and bad about living here. I don't candy coat anything, as you know. I don't sugar coat anything. There is no Hollywood producers making this video. Just me and Mr. Parker. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling it just like it is. So here's your questions, all right? My, big, my biggest concern about moving so far away from where I am now is the possibility of being very lonely. You have talked about being bored. What about lonely? Do you find it difficult to develop relationships? Especially for those of us not well spoken in Spanish. Okay, so let me start with the end of the question and I'll work my way back because uh, I, because that's just the way I want to do it, okay? Uh, don't worry about not being well spoken in Spanish. I mean, if you come here and if you're serious about living here and you want to stay here, Spanish lessons are very affordable, okay? So learn Spanish, folks. I mean, I know some of, for some of us, it's easier said than done. I, it's difficult for me. I don't learn as well as I did even 10 years ago. But eventually, I mean, I surprise myself sometimes with what I've been able to manage to put together in my old feeble mind and be able to remember it, you know? So don't let that stop you. I do have to say that the it does get a little old having to use one of these every time you want to say something to somebody google translate you know and try to translate what you're saying i don't like doing that you you can meet english speaking locals here okay um, let me repeat that you can meet english speaking local ecuadorians here not to mention expats, okay? So you don't don't let the language barrier make you think that you can't have a relationship. You might get lucky like me and meet somebody that's... I met a local Ecuadorian lady and she speaks perfect English and she's very, um, very beneficial for me in my learning Spanish because she helps me with it a lot. She teaches me a lot. And I love to watch or listen to her speak. So, now, did I find it, or, or what about lonely? You talk about being bored and being lonely. I think both can kind of lead to each other, you know. Loneliness, I'll tell you like people have told me, you can be as lonely as you want to be. When I came here, I was devastatingly lonely. It was horrible for me. I came here not knowing anybody. I didn't know which way was up and which way was down. I, it was horribly, it was horrible for me. I've always had kind of a, an issue with depression, but boy, I tell you, when I came here, loneliness brought that depression out and it just compounded it. 
But the way I got through that and the way I got over it was I found something to do. In my particular case, it was this channel, doing these videos, trying to help people, you know. I got involved in the, a yearly art show that takes place here where I was able to display some of my photography work and I sold digital downloads uh, from of my, my work and we were able to uh, donate that money to a, a really worthwhile charity here uh, called the Yellow Submarine. So, you know, find, you, you, you have to find things to do. Get on, I'm, a lot of people, I know a lot of people don't like Facebook and I don't, don't come back and tell me, well, I don't do Facebook because when you come here, you, you got to be on Facebook, okay? And I'll tell you the reason why. Not the general public Facebook, but you find specialized groups here. I, I started with Monta and Monta B Expats and Amigos. That's Mark Bragberry's page. Very popular page here. All right, it's like 5,000 followers on that page. And the reason why I recommend it is because it's chock full of resources. Okay, things to do, places to go, people to see, groups to join. There's other Facebook groups that you can join. You have to immerse yourself into this culture here, okay? And you won't be lonely. There's, uh, and of course, since you're going to be here, when you get here, hopefully you listen, and you're going to see, you're going to be introduced to some of the WhatsApp groups, you know, that are around. And one of the ones that I've found is like, that I particularly like, I don't get to go very much, but it is the Wednesday night dinner group. And it's all expats, and, we, and some Ecuadorians, and we get together at a different restaurant every Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, and we all just eat and just sit and shoot the bull, you know, with each other. So there's no excuse for being lonely here. There's people here. There are, there are single expats here, and there are, of course, married expats as well. So you can't... If, if, the way I look at it is if you, if you immerse, immerse yourself into this culture and... and get involved and as much as you can that'll take care of the loneliness part and then of course that will also take care of being bored you won't be bored the next question many who move abroad say to be careful not to stay in the expat bubble i agree and i disagree i, I you need to be in the expat bubble to some extent especially when you first get here you need you need to you, you listen there's resources you you when I came here, I mean, I knew nobody. I wasn't involved in any groups or anything. And the way I finally started, you know, getting out and getting myself, getting used to being here, I went to the grocery store, the Mega Maxi in the mall. And believe me, when you're in there, you're going to hear people speaking English. You know, you'll see other expats. You'll see people from all walks of life, you know, walking around in there. And you'll occasionally hear couples talking. And that's what I did. I heard a couple talking. I still talk to them today. Bob and Susan Reed, my friends Bob and Susan, they were the first English-speaking, they're from Canada. And I heard them talking. And I turned around and said, oh, English-speaking people, hi. <laughs> and that's how I got started. You know, you're going to eventually, you got to be friendly. You got to be outgoing. You got to. You got to be willing to speak up. You got to, you know, because listen, you're not going to come here and then expats are magically just going to flock to you and embrace you. Okay? I'm sorry to say. Because remember, a lot of people from the U.S. especially, are, they got a lot on their minds. You know, they come from a, a place that's just chock full of turmoil and hate and discontent. And some of these people bring that crap with them. So you're going to meet those. But they're all part of this expat bubble. And you gotta have to, you're going to have to be in it somewhat. Now, once you get to start, start getting to know people and you start finding things to do and places to go, you can start backing away from that expat bubble. And you can start meeting Ecuadorians. There are some wonderful people here. English-speaking Ecuadorians, there's, you'll, you will meet them here, okay? So, yeah, you can be cautious of the expat bubble, but don't avoid it, okay? You're, 
you're going to need it to some point, okay? She said, I'm going to repeat that. Many who move abroad say to be careful to not stay in the expat bubble so that one can really feel what it's like to live in another place. That seems smart to me. On the other hand, to develop friendships quickly, is it better to hang with other expats? So that's kind of, I answered that. You, you will need to be under that bubble for a little bit, okay? And believe me, you will meet some expats that you won't like, okay? They're here. I guarantee you, they're here. You're going to meet some that you won't like. You're going to meet some, like I did, that you're going to think they're your new BFF and they'll turn their back on you so fast. It's just typical human nature, okay? It happens. It happens wherever you go. So, so what is your experience, Donald? I think I just kind of answered that. My other concern is that if I wanted to move back to the States, would it even be possible after closing out life here? It would be expensive to find housing car again if I'd sold things. That's true. And that's why, you know, when I first came here, I, I always said, hey, just get rid of everything and, and just get here and immerse yourself in the, the culture and start your, immerse yourself in your new life, you know? And, and just build from scratch and everything. But, you know, I tell people now uh, all the time, if you can, put some stuff in storage. Don't sell your car right away unless you need the money, you know. Some people might need need the money. When I, when I started getting rid of things, I wanted to just get all the cash together that I could, you know, and, and, and use that, you know, for my benefit here. I wanted to have a nest egg put together, which is what I did. And I wanted some money to bring here with me to invest in their the high rate, high yield CDs. You know, so I I sold everything and tried. I liquidated as much as I could. But you, you, you I don't I don't say I'm not advising to people to do that. That's just what I did. It's not a bad idea. Okay, if you have any doubt in your mind that you may not want to stay here, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put stuff up in storage for a year. Get a year lease on a storage place and and just put your stuff in there. Keep your car, you know. Then once you get here and you decide that you like it, you get through that honeymoon period and you decide you love it and you want to stay here, then you can go back and liquidate or have somebody do it for you. That's what I do. There, there's, there's no law that says you have to get rid of everything to move to another country. I've met some people here that did just that. They put stuff away. They kept essentials and valuable things and got rid of everything else so that's it that's what that's my thoughts on those questions for this person if you agree or disagree leave a comment folks let us know what you think if you like this channel please subscribe if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you don't like it give me a thumbs down i still get paid so it doesn't matter to me then you can go pound sand all right or go listen to somebody else's channel i've got a couple of interesting videos coming up i got one that's coming up I'm going to give you a little hint about what it's going to be about. It's going to have to do with end of life. What happens if you die here? And I'm going to, going to interview a lawyer that's going to explain documentation that you need to put together for that. And then I'm going to meet somebody that's going to tell us what to do with your body. Okay? It's going to be fun, folks. Have a great day. Talk to you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Stop saying that. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Stop. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs>